Hey everyone, this is Rahul with the Alternative Investors Hangout, and today we have a returning guest. He is Chris Marchese. He's over at the Morgan Report. Thanks for coming on again, Chris. Great to be back. We see these headlines in the news, and they're saying the same thing that we saw in fall time, in saying that, hey, the Federal Reserve is going to taper, and we're seeing news come out. For instance, you have some of these guys from the red states, such as Fisher of Dallas, saying that QE needs to end. But then you see some other individuals, such as Charlie Evans, even though he's not going to vote next year, he tweeted that we're going to print or we should print $1.5 trillion per year, so meaning that $125 billion per month. So how do you see it? Do you just see these stories coming out in the media and that's just – Basically, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you see all these doves on the Federal Reserve Committee. Oh, yeah. I mean, they might. I've been thinking about it, and they might actually taper um, treasury purchases and maybe mortgage backed securities, but they could increase um, or start something like uh, buying student loans or uh, municipal bonds, which has been talked about. Another thing um, in which they could uh, taper back on treasuries quite a bit would be charging um, commercial banks um, interest rate rates on their um, excess reserves, which would force them to lend. In, in other words, that would um, increase the supply of money and and – have a downward effect on interest rates instead of keep on pumping or buying these uh, securities. But that would actually be more inflationary uh, in a quick period of uh, amount of time. And, you know, Janet Yellen's written about that. That's been thrown around the FOMC meetings um, this year. So something's going to change. I mean, it, to um, some individuals, individuals they might think oh yeah they're actually tapering but they're not going to quit printing money in fact they're probably going to have more money inject more money into the system that'll actually circulate instead of just keeping the bank solvent that's an interesting point how you mentioned they would buy student loans and muni bonds but we haven't seen the muni bond market blow up as of yet i mean there's detroit obviously there are a few other markets out there here in Chicago land. I mean, they continue to get downgraded. But won't you think that they could potentially do that not this year or next year, maybe in 2015, because you could see some problems erupt in those markets. I mean, we are seeing some problems right now in the student loan market. A lot of individuals continue to default in that. But right now, it doesn't look like they do that. Why would you think that they would want to maybe buy muni bonds and student loan debt right now. Well, they they don't want to wait till something happens because, you know, they they put a lot of um faith in um trust and, you know, how uh, people view the markets. So, if they were able to buy them ahead of time and prevent a uh, crisis, you know, that could potentially – actually, it would you know, increase confidence um, more than have, buying them when something did actually occur. Moving forward, I wanted to get into gold and silver. You've been following these markets extensively as you're with the Morgan Report. But if you're looking at silver right now, I see a lot of bears – who I mean, there are a lot of bulls in this market, and now they're turning into bears. But you have to also remember, you see tax loss season coming at the end of this year, and silver has obviously underperformed. And right now, silver is trading around 19.87, around that range. And it just seems that if you look at the charts, there's probably more downside. Some chartists that I've been following stated that gold could go down as much as roughly 10 to 12 percent from right now which sounds crazy but if you look at the charts from the 1970s you saw 42 43 percent retracement from gold and then you saw it go up seven fold seven eight fold after that 
Do you see that similar pattern pattern happening right now? Uh, yeah, it could happen. I think the key will be if um, gold and silver close below the lows set in um, on June 28th, I believe it was. Then you would probably see gold test a thousand ten fifty, and silver in the sixteen dollar area. And I do think that's uh, more likely in gold than in silver, just because the um, silver supply you can't really. Um, there's only so far you can manipulate it downwards, and we did see a strong. Um, intraday retracement when it did hit the lows in June. Plus, um, you know, we did a study at the Morgan Report on the all-in costs of mining silver, which also also included uh, base metal miners, gold miners, silver miners. And that was uh, the average, you know, throughout the whole or the bottom 50 percent on the cost curve was just over $20 an ounce. So, yeah, it it could uh, go to 16, 15, 16. I think it'll hold that 18, you know, just, just above 18 level. But you know, it's 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 a great opportunity if it does manage to uh, break those uh, support levels, both on the gold and silver side. So if we see Janet Yellen coming in next year, and she obviously is a dove, and it just seems that she may increase the amount that they're printing right now, compared to right now, which is $85 billion. If they raise it to $100 billion, would you say that 2014 is just like 2000, 2001, where it was a great opportunity for many people to get in, and you saw 1976, 1977, where you're just going to see metals explode. Do you see it like that, or it's just going to be a slow consolidation period? Because there are some guys saying that it's going to crash, and then you're going to see that upward move. How do you see it? I see. I think it will consolidate next year, but move higher. And in um, 2015, probably late 2015 to 2016, I think we'll see a move uh, – relatively similar to um, that in the late 70s. Yeah, and speaking of these late moves, I mean, we're looking at Bitcoin right now. It went all the way from earlier this year, $35 to roughly around 800 I don't know what the exact price is right now. Why is there so much speculative activity in your mind? Why you see this hot money going in? Shouldn't it be going to gold and silver, which have been used as money in the past? Yeah, it's just people don't understand it. They, you know, a lot of people claim that the government can't intervene, but of course they can. They'll just, they can just throw, make a law saying they'll throw anyone in jail that uh, does use Bitcoin. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot like other bubbles, like uh, Beanie Babies or, you know, things like that. You know, it's a it's a new uh, fad, and um, unfortunately, you know, it, it's I think it's a bubble. You know, it's just like fiat uh, money in that it's just it's money based on based on faith instead of backed by anything. So it's not any better than fiat. The only claim on why it's better than fiat is because the government can intervene. So, you know, I'm happy for those that made a ton, and if it goes higher, make a lot there. But at some point, it'll be a great short. Yeah, I do agree that it will be a great short. But the thing is, remember when the Cyprus situation occurred? That's when you saw all of this money go in. And we know that our banking system is somewhat fragile, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have another – bail-in situation, whether it's in Europe or even here in the United States or some Western country, you may just see a lot of hot money just going to Bitcoins and you have all this central bank money. I wouldn't be surprised if they could just take this 
significantly higher from here. And then, yeah, it's going to be a short, and then you could probably see gold and silver going higher, or you may see gold and silver go higher from then. Oh, of course. Uh, gold and silver, you know, they're going to be led by uh, Asia. They're the ones that understand it. They're the smart ones. And unfortunately, the Western world is going to be, they're going to, on average, those who have gold and silver are going to end up paying much higher prices. Indeed. And uh, before we finish, I just want to tell everyone listening at home, just make sure to do your due diligence before investing in any asset, commodity, etc. And spend hours doing your diligence on that. And just use this as an opinion, not as a way to invest in any particular asset. And before I let you go, Chris, how can people follow your work? I work for David Morgan, so just go to... um silver-investor.com we have a newsletter um there's various uh levels uh, basic to premium etc and or just join our uh, free emailing list all right thanks for coming on again chris thanks